been done. It's been a strong, hard, diligent camp. Uh, Saddam, who I refer to as my nephew, was yelled at, pushed, shoved, driven through the through the mud to make sure that he was ready to to, to perform at 154 pounds. And in the beginning, I was like, okay. But now he showed me that he wanted to be that he wanted to be that fighter to contend against Miguel Cotto, a legend, and one of my favorites. But Saturday night, he won't be my favorite. <laughs> I still love him. <laughs> we came here to win a title, to perform, to entertain the crowd, and that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna entertain the crowd and we're gonna come out victorious. Uh, before I go, I'd like to thank our team, uh, my partner in crime, Saddam's assistant trainer, Lenny Wilson, uh, my nephew, Curtis Stevens, his dad, my brother, David Ali, and the rest of the team. We had a fantastic time and we're looking forward to Saturday. We'll all see you there. Thank you, Andre. Um, having worked with Saddam for the last few years, I've never seen him in better shape. I was just tell, I was joking with his dad right before the press conference, and I said, he's got muscles now. <laughs> he's got muscles now. So I know he worked hard. And, and again, you cannot underestimate a dream. Having a dream, being that little kid, working towards something, and getting to that point. And that's what's happened with Saddam. You know, he's always dreamed about being on, at this stage here, at the Garden, fighting a big fight, a legendary fighter. And that's, that's what David told me in many of our conversations when he called me every day for two weeks. He said, Eric, this is our dream. This is Saddam's dream. Just give him the opportunity. He won't let you down. Give him the opportunity. And I got to tell you, I mean, I, you know, just, you know, being in boxing for 20 years and, and doing thousands of fights, these are the most dangerous fights because you can underlook, you, you, you can overlook a guy. You know, he comes in just under the radar a little bit. And you never know. Anything can happen. Especially here at the Garden. Especially at the Garden here because, you know, Garden has had some special nights, historic nights. Here. So I'm very happy for him. He's from Brooklyn. Uh, he's your very own fighter, uh, Saddam Ali. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to thank God uh, for bringing everybody together. Uh, thank God for this opportunity. Of course, thank Koro, Team Koro, for this opportunity. Thank uh, Team Ali, uh, uh, HBO, uh, Madison Square Garden, and Golden Boy Promotions for this opportunity. Uh, like you said, I've been training my whole life since I was eight years old. Uh, started boxing, and then, um, everybody waits for a world title like this, uh, and, and against a legend for a world title. It gets no better. Uh, so yes, you do see a little more muscle because you gotta work hard. You're going in there, you find Miguel Cotto, you're not ready, you're gonna be in trouble. So I, I know what I'm stepping in there with. I know that I have to be ready. So um, I know there's a lot of people that are saying, oh, this might not be a good fight, but everybody can say what they want, but when we get in there Saturday night, you're gonna see an amazing fight. And, um, and I'm excited, I just wanna thank everybody. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Saddam. Freddie Roach, as Peter Nelson said, is probably one of the greatest trainers of all time. And he's been working with Miguel for, uh, is it four fights now, five fights? The last six fights. And it's funny because I, I noticed it right away when, when Miguel, and we're all fans of Miguel, you know, we work with him, he's a friend of ours and this and that, but you know, we're all fans of what he's done and what he's meant for boxing. And it's just like Paco said, it doesn't matter where you're at. You could be traveling around the world, you could be at home, you could be at whatever. When Miguel fights, you want to watch. And people want to watch. And I remember the first time I saw Miguel fight, 
uh, under Freddie. And I noticed some of the things because we have experience, you know, Freddie worked with Oscar a little bit and he's worked with many of our other fighters. And, you know, I noticed a lot of things that, that, that Freddie changed or what he was working on Miguel. And it's funny because Miguel's been like a brand new fighter. He's been like a brand new fighter. And, and the chemistry, the chemistry, that's, that's one thing that's very important for a fighter is having that chemistry with the trainer. You can have the best trainer, but, you know, if there's no chemistry, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. But these two guys, they connected. And Miguel has never looked better. He's looked incredible. Yeah, he had one loss with Canelo, but that was a very close fight. Everybody knows that. We know that. We were biting our nails. And that was a very, very close fight. With, with, with. But it shows how great. And he probably outweighed you, what, 10, 15 pounds in that fight? Something, something like that? <laughs> Give or take. <laughs> but, you know, what Freddie has been able to do, re rejuvenate again. And it's been, it's been special. It's been special. And I want to... Thank Freddie for his commitment to Miguel and his team and, and what he's done for him. And I want to bring him up to say a few words. Freddie Roach. Thank you. Um, we've had a really, really good training camp. Um, you know, I know this is our, supposed to be our last training camp. And it's um, a little bit of a sad moment to say that, but I, I'm going to miss this guy a lot. But um, we had a really good training camp. We, we really, um, yesterday was the best I've ever seen. We seen Miguel like, get ready for the big, big fight. And um, he's just in great shape. We didn't take anyone lightly. We never took, retirement, no one talked about that during training camp because we had a fight coming up. And we're going to go out of his windows and he's on top of his game right now. And you're going to see the best Miguel yet. Thank you. So as I said a little earlier, this is the second fight that we're working with Miguel Cotto. And what was refreshing for me and, and, and our team is, you know, normally you work with fighters and they get involved with, you know, well, you know, who's the opponent, who, you, who are we going to fight, you know, the managers get involved. With Miguel it was totally different. Totally different. The conversation with Miguel and his team were, is Golovkin available? <laughs> no, Golovkin's not available in the center. Then I don't care who. You guys pick the opponent, get me anybody. I'll fight anybody. And that's really, really refreshing, especially from a fighter that's a veteran like Miguel. Especially for a fighter that's going out. He really didn't care who he was fighting. And that's always very very refreshing to a promoter and, and it's a little different because many managers and fighters they try to get involved especially when they're veterans they've been around they know what they're looking for they know what the kind of style they want to fight um and when i came and i said hey we're looking saddam ali miguel said no problem anybody you guys work it out you guys decide just give me the date the weight i'll be there and and he's pretty much been that way throughout his career I've been told, and uh, it's something that's great and refreshing, and it, it goes to show that when you're in shape, when you're sure about yourself, and you believe in yourself, you'll fight anybody. And, and that's the kind of attitude that Miguel's had throughout his career, and that's the reason why he's a warrior, and that's the reason why we all love him, and uh, it's going to be bittersweet on Saturday, but it's going to be a, a, a it's, we're all going to have a great celebration on Saturday because a legendary fight was fighting his last fight at the Garden. And, uh, and it's going to be a special night. So I can't wait. I'm getting a little choked up here. <laughs> uh, but I want to bring up, say a few words, you can hear from the man himself, the great, the great Miguel Cotto. Thank you, Eric. It's been a pleasure for me to try to entertain <laughs> you guys for 17 years, try to do my best every opportunity for the benefit of my family. There are many uh, 
everything to me. Uh, and I so proud of them. They're so proud of me. And all I can say is uh, next Saturday, I'll be the same Miguel you watch for the last 16 years. I'm going to be a warrior inside the arena. I'm going to do my best, as always, for the benefit of my whole family. Thank you. Yeah.